Hey, aloha my internet family. Welcome back to Practical Printing. You guys ready to have some fun and learn something new? Let's go! Okay, so today's topic is hot end socks or heater block socks. Um, E3D has come out with their own version. I, I believe the hexagon hot ends also have a silicone sock for theirs. But what it is is a little shroud made out of silicone that's high temperature resistant that fits around the heater block on your hot end. What this helps prevent is when your blower fan kicks in, especially at lower layer heights where the fan is reflecting up off of your build plate, um, it helps prevent your heater block from dropping dramatically in temperature and it allows you to maintain temps. Um, this tends to be a lot more prevalent when you're dealing in the 230, 250, 260 range temperatures for materials like PETG or ABS or nylon than when you're printing in the 190 to 220 block uh, temperature block you know for things like PLA. So let me show you what I've found and what we're going to try to do here. Now, I am going to do this as a two-part episode, and I'll explain that as we go through here just to break things up a bit. Okay, so I wanted to try this for me specifically for my HE280 hot end. Uh, so looking around on Thingiverse, I found this recently published model by Turpinator uh, for the HE280 silicone mold. The HE280 is the hot end um, unit used on all of the CME, CNC's current generation printers, the H2, the Rostock V3, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the same thing applies to E3D, the V6 silicone, or basically any hot end heater block that you want to try to prevent from cooling down and insulate a little bit. Uh, now I'll post links to both of these models that I found down in the comments section. Uh, but today we're specifically going to focus on the HE280. So I went ahead and downloaded this file, printed it out, and let me walk you through the process that I used of packing the mold full of silicone and getting to that point. Um, part two of this video, since it is a bit of a process and you have to wait for the silicone to dry and harden up, uh, part two of this we're going to take it out of the mold and actually try to fit it on the printer and see if it improves things. So with that, let me take you over to the process of packing the mold. Okay, so what I have here is a little glass bowl with uh, some warm water and some dishwashing soap in it. I've got the bottom printed piece, I've got the top printed piece, and then I have the piece that's similar to the hot end here. Um, I know most people would recommend using a two-part silicone, but I don't happen to have any. What I do have is some of this ultra copper. Uh, this is a high temp silicone uh, designed for making gaskets in cars so it can handle extreme temperatures. So uh, since this is kind of more of an experiment than anything I don't want to spend any money looking for anything else. So we're gonna gush out a nice blob of that and uh, kind of follow the directions on the line. I'm gonna drop that in the water here and uh, hopefully this all comes out my wife doesn't kill me later. And um, we're going to kind of knead that up a little bit in the soap and water to get it just a little bit soft and squishy. Um, and try to make sure that there's no air bubbles in it. Now I probably, I didn't think about it, but I probably should have wore some latex gloves or something to so I don't get this all over my hands. But um, I'll deal with that later. And I'm going to dip the parts as well into the soapy water. 
and theoretically that's going to make it so that it doesn't stick. Now I'm going to put this blob in here and try to make sure that it reaches all of the edges. A lot of this is going to get uh, dispelled here and clean up as you go, you know, make, make things nice and pretty. So there's a key hole on the bottom of that if you can see it and it's kind of fitted. So we're going to push this in here and we'll see that it in the water everything gushes up all around it and we're just going to try to get that to there we go made up anything that squishes out I'm just gonna kinda gob back in the top here and wipe that goo around okay and then we're now we're going to snap the cover piece on here and it should also just kind of made up and squish out and we'll just pop that down there and um, anywhere that it gushed out around the edges I'm gonna wipe with a paper towel here just to I don't expect to get more than one use out of this mold uh, which is okay but I don't want it to be all sticky and difficult to get apart later right so we're just gonna do that I'm gonna try to push as any of this that wants to come back in there back through that hole and otherwise just wipe that clean and we're just going to set this aside and uh, we'll come back to it in a couple of hours um, probably going to let it sit overnight and we'll uh, that way we make sure that it hardens up with you know the water and the soap I don't know if that decreases the um, the dry time or increases I should say the dry time uh, so we'll come back in a tomorrow and we'll see what this looks like Okay, so stay tuned for part two, where we're going to break this thing out of the mold. We're going to cut it out, we're going to trim the silicone, and then we're going to fit it on the hot end. And I will attempt to do a couple of uh, PID auto-tunes at higher temperatures with the sock on and the hot end parked uh, right above the build plate. And uh, we're going to see if it passes or fails and how long it takes to get to temperature and make sure that it can hold it. So we can determine if this thing is a success or not. So with that, I leave you, bid you adieu. We will see you after Bay Area Maker Faire. Uh, part two will probably be put out after the Maker Faire. Um, if you like what we're doing, stay tuned, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you on part two.